Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we honor you this morning for a privilege to be in your house, Jehovah Father, house that is called by your name, King of all the glory. We assemble in this place to your Father to hear from you. Come and speak to us, to your Lord, in a language you can understand in the name of Jesus. We know to your Father you never gather your people in vain. And because you are your people this morning, Abba Father, we know you have a word for us, King of all the glory, to take us an extra mile in the name of Jesus. Because you know salvation is a journey, Abba Father, and you need to be refilled every time, King of all the glory, because we live in a foreign land. We thank you and bless you this morning for the ministry of your word, Abba Father. Oh God, this is your written word, King of all the glory. Come to your Father and breathe it in our hearts to your Father. Oh God and our Master, let it work in us to your Father. We stand to be rebuked this morning. We stand to be encouraged, Abba Father. We stand to be empowered to your Father in the name of Jesus Christ. We surrender to you, to your Lord. This is your space, Abba Father. Father, come and take over. Come and take over, Jehovah. Come and take over, King of all the glory. And this moment I speak to you, Father. Connection between the pulpit to you, Father. This altar that speaks an exchange and your people. We honor you and we bless you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Worship team. You may have our seats. Welcome once again to this house called by the name of our Father. We thank God for life. We thank God for preserving us another week that we can gather in this place. My name is Beatrice Waitaka. For those who are visitors, I'm a member of this church. I'm a daughter in this house. And I thank God for a privilege to share the word of God this morning. And before I, t I share the word, I want to take this opportunity to thank our father, our bishop, and our mom, Pastor Alice. We don't take it for granted when you're giving this altar that you can share the order course of God. We know there are people with the word, but they don't have a pulpit. Therefore, for us and for me, we want to thank God for you. May you live to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I want to thank God for the fact that you have come. Today is the last day in the month of January. Yes. When we began January, it was like a mountain. You know, some of us, we are paid our Saturdays mid in December. And you thought, now this is January. But I want to thank God this morning that January is over. No matter how it, hard it was, January is over. It is now past the tense because tomorrow will be February. And we don't know what February holds in store for us. Therefore, this morning, have a heart of thanksgiving that the Lord saw you through. No matter how hard January was, you are a remnant. This morning, I want to share on a topic. And I'm calling it forgiveness. Forgiveness. And the Bible says in the book of Luke, 6, 36, and 37. Be merciful, even as your father is merciful. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. It starts with having mercy, then comes to judge, and then condemn. And finally, to put icing on that cake, it says, forgive. I know it is easy to give mercy or to be merciful. It is easy not to judge. It is easy not to condemn. But it is not easy to forgive and forget. And therefore this morning, in a few minutes, we want to see what it means to forgive. We are offered total and complete forgiveness of our sins because God loves us and has mercy on us. Remember, we were forgiven. First and foremost, the Lord felt mercy upon us, and then he forgave us. When we are at our lowest, I don't know what your lowest was, God met us and offered us eternal, abundant life in him. He is asking you to live and operate in his likeness, because you are created in the image and the likeness of God. And if God can forgive, 
even you and I, we can also forgive. For, therefore, he's requesting us to live in his likeness by loving others the way you have been loved. Have you been loved by the Lord? Yes. Behind your mask, have you been loved by the Lord? The Lord expects you to love somebody. God doesn't give us the option. It is loving and loving. Vertically, loving the Father through repentance. Vertically. You love the Father through repentance. Horizontally, you love others through forgiveness. You have an expectation. And the Lord has an expectation from us. Friends, repentance is not just a change of mind. It is a change of heart. Repentance and faith are two sides of the same coin and cannot be separated. Do you have faith in the Lord? The Lord expects you to forgive and also to repent. Your part is to repent before God. And before others, it is to forgive because it is two sides of the same coin. In the book of Colossians 3.13, Colossians 3.13, the Bible says, bearing one another. Not yourself. It is one another. The Bible is, is full of one another rings. Pastor Addison Omade say, one another rings. Yes, if there's any word like that, one another rings. Bearing one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. It's not an option. You must forgive. If we are living with unforgiveness, we are living outside of the will of God. Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane, not my will, but your will be done. You will, you, the, the will of the Father in your life is for you to forgive and live according to to you, the, the, the will of your father. The Bible is full of one another because this life is all about people, not person. I want to come again. The Bible is full of one another because this life is all about people, not person. You cannot be the world as a person, but we can be the world as people. Therefore, the Lord requires us to forgive one another. You forgive and forget. Ephesians 4.32 Be kind to one another. Tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. We are coming out of a, of a very difficult year. Last year, yes. I'm not ignorant because I know last year was a hard year to some of us. But for some of us, it was the best year. And because of what happened last year, we are nursing grudges and forgiveness in our heart. You are carrying your bows. People were sacked. Some remain. You are among those who are sacked. And even today you are in this house this morning and you are still holding a grudge against your bows. And forgiveness. Yes, people said this. You had a business. You used to learn. Now you are borrowing. And you are so hearted. You are saying, is there any God in heaven? I want to submit to you this morning. No matter what you are going through, there is a God in heaven. Either you are, you slept hungry, you don't have fear to go back home, God remains God. And as our sister Milka said, that all things work together for our good. Romans 8.28. Don't only thank God when things are good on your side. Even though things are bad, continue praising this God. Let's learn to heal past wounds. We all have wounds. But my prayer this morning is that let's learn to heal past wounds and forgive present scars. When you see that scar, you remember it was a wound. Learn to heal past wounds and forgive present scars. It's time to remove walls. We have put so many walls because of unforgiveness. Let's move walls and build boundaries that I cannot pass here because I'm born again. I'm putting a boundary, but not a wall. Our life is surrounded by so many walls, like a wall of Jericho. But this morning, I want to bring to your attention that you can bring that wall down by forgiveness. And because you have the ability to live a lifestyle of forgiveness, we must discover the depth of of forgiveness we have received in Jesus. The depth. You may tell me you are not a sinner. Nobody was born, born again. 
We all give birth to pagans. At some point, they come to realize that they are sinners and they give their life to each other. The only person who is born a Muslim is a Muslim. A Muslim will give birth to a Muslim. But for us Christians, no matter who you are, no matter the title, you give birth to a pagan. But along the way, they meet the Jesus and they became saints. One as if you were. God's love is a foundation of our own. You cannot forgive unless you know God. You cannot forgive unless you have the love of God. It's only God who can help you to forgive because he knows what it means to forgive. His forgiveness is the foundation of our own forgiveness. He set an example that he who can forgive, if he forgave, you can also forgive. Your life was rooted in destruction with no way out. That was your life. Yet God saw it fit to forgive every transgression you have ever committed and you will commit. Not because you are born again, you don't sin. We keep on sinning. And that's why we are supposed to, to make repentance a lifestyle. Every day, every day you go before the Lord. You, for, you, you repent. The, the sins of omission and sins of commission. Because as a point, you don't know you've sinned. But remember this, we have an accuser. Yet God saw it fits. Yes, the father so longed for your restoration to him that he paid the highest price of Jesus' death. That was the highest price. And remember this, friends. The blood of bulls, the blood of sheep, could not have cleansed us. It took the blood of Jesus. We were that sinners. The children of Israel, their sins were cleansed by the blood of bulls. But for us, we were so much in sin that only the blood of Jesus could have cleansed us. The door leading to heaven is through forgiveness. No forgiveness, no heaven. And people normally say, if I'm going to forgive so and so to, to enter heaven, what are being with Kai? It is not that simple. Forgiveness. Are you holding a grudge this morning? When you search your life, if Jesus was to come today, will you pass through that door? Or you'll be left outside because of holding somebody. Something that happened to your life many years back, you are still holding a grudge against that person. It's high time you put it down. Forgive that person and forgive, for, forget. Because Jesus forgave you and forget all your sins. A story is told, and this is a true story, of a, a servant of God. This man was preparing, like how we are preparing yesterday to minister today. In the evening, he was sitting in his sitting room with his family. He was a, a, a husband of one wife and a father of a girl and a boy. And the wife was in the kitchen preparing supper. And the teenagers, one was 16 years, the other one was 12 years. The 16 years was a young man, and the 12 years was the girl. They were still in the sitting room. And gangs broke into their house. When they came in, they shot the man of God. They shot his wife. And then they raped the girl, the 12 years girl. And then they beat Brooke, and Brooke was left for dead. But Brooke never died. He was able to gain strength, went to hospital. After many months in ICU and visiting so many counselors, Brooke was back on his feet. And because of the seed that was planted by his father, he came back to Christ. Along the way, Brooke became a missionary. And one day, he went to preach in prison. This man was condemned to hang. And when Brooke went to minister to them, he met this man. The one, he was among, there were two. No, the one, the, the one among the two. And Brooke asked this man, remember this man is in prison. And Brooke asked him, why did you have to do it? Just one question. Why did you have to do it? Remember, Brooke lost his father the mother and the sister. Even his life, just because of God's mercies, God preserved his life. And he asked, asked this man, why did you have to do it? And Brooke forgave that man. If you are Brooke this morning, what 
that you are nursing this morning, the grudge that you are nursing this morning, is it bigger than what Brooke went through? Whom can't you forgive? There are some effects of unforgiveness. When we refuse to forgive, we become disobedient to God. Because according to the Lord's prayer, we say, forgive us as we forgive those who transgress upon us. We open a door for Satan to send all kinds of trouble in our lives. We also hinder the flow of love toward others. Our faith is blocked and our prayers are hidden. We become miserable and lose our joy. All these things is a result of unforgiven forgiveness. But when you forgive, you are set free. Our attitude is poisoned and we spread the poison to everyone we meet. Somebody who is at hurting always hurt others. When you are hurting, you hurt others. Forgiveness does not have devastating events, effects. Sorry. Process of forgiveness is that you desire. You desire to forgive. You decide to forgive. And then you depend upon the Holy Spirit. It is not that easy. But it is a decision. It is a process. You desire, you decide, and then you depend upon the Holy Spirit. Forgiveness is definitely a gift. It is one we receive and one that we willingly give. You are given. And the Lord expects you to give willingly, not at attaching any strings. That I'll forgive you, but not remove the but. The Lord forgive you with no but. The Lord forgive you and forget. The Lord is requesting you this morning. Forgive and forget. In the book of Luke 12, 48, the Bible said, But he who did not know, yet committed things, deserving of stripes, shall be beaten with a few. For everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required. And to whom much has been committed, of him they will ask the more. Yes, you may tell me, Pastor, I had no many sins. But let me tell you, friend, one sin and many sins, they brought Jesus to the cross. If you are the only sinner with that small sin, Jesus could still come and die for you. Therefore, don't see others are, 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 have, many, have many sins that you had. We are all sinners. Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Not few, all have sinned. We could realize how many times in one day God forgives us for something we have thought, for something we have said, and for something we have done. If you are not a sinner, take an account of your thought life. Take an account of the word you spoke, you have spoken in one day, especially as ladies. Take an account of the words that you have spoken. But the Lord forgive us all. What you have, what you have thought this day, what you have done, and what you have said. Remember where the Lord got you from. Where did the Lord get you from? Yes, you are in church, but you are not saved. This makes you to forgive. God saw an apostle in Paul when he was persecuting Christians. God saw a king in David when he was shepherding his father's sheep. God saw a son and a daughter in you. He saw a servant. He saw a nasha in you. He saw a worshiper in you. And he saw a leader in you when you were in that condition and in that situation. And having that in mind, there's nobody you cannot forgive. Forgiveness should be a lifestyle. It's obedience to God. Friends, a slave obeys because he has to. A slave obeys because he has to. An employee obeys because he needs to. 
and a loving son obeys because he wants to. Where are you? Are you an employee? Are you a servant? Are you a loving son? Who are you? We have not arrived, but pressing on toward the mark of perfection. First John 1 9. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all, unri our, all unrighteousness. First John 1 9. God has already made a provision for our faults so that we can remain in fellowship and relationship with him. Even if we are not yet perfected in our behavior, you either forgive or not. In the book of Exodus 8.28, the Bible says, all right, this is Pharaoh, all right, go ahead, Pharaoh replied, I will let you go into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord, your God, but don't go too far away. Now, hurry and pray for me. Don't go very far. Don't forgive completely. You see how we twist the, uh, the scriptures? Don't forgive completely. And don't go very far. You can forgive halfway and live halfway. The enemy wants to have a grip on you. And the Bible says in Zechariah 3.3, 3, Yeshua's clothing was filthy as he stood there before the angel. You see, the enemy is looking for a grip in your life. And that's why he's telling you, don't forgive completely. Forgive half and leave the other half. When I was Sifiwe, we want to look at some attributes that reveal unforgiveness. Number one, unforgiveness always keeps score. It keeps cold. Joseph had every reason not to forgive, but he chose to. In the book of Genesis, 45 verse number 4. Please come closer, he said to them. So they came closer. And he said again, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into slavery in Egypt. Joseph had every reason to keep us cold. But he remembered this. He was on a mission. We like to keep a record of our admirable behavior and a record of the sins of others. So and so did this to me. You keep a record. In Matthew 18, 21 and 22, the Bible says, Then Peter came to Jesus and asked him, Him is Jesus, Lord, how often should I forgive Someone who sins against me seven times. 22. No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. Those are how many times? 490. One person. Can one person sin against you 490 times? Are we together? He was obviously keeping a record of offenses, just as we do. 1 Corinthians 13, 5, the Bible says, it's not dishonor. It, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. This is love. When we forgive, we must forgive completely from the heart, not the head. Because the Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mother speaks, not, about, not of the abundance of the head, but out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And that means we let it go and remember it no more. John 7, 38b, the Bible says, Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scripture declare, 
This is the part I want us to hear. Rivers of living water will flow from his heart, not from his head. Therefore, when you forgive, forgive from the heart, not from the head. Because forgiveness keep, unforgiveness keeps call and record. You find somebody has served in the church in all departments. When you came to this church, you were an usher. You are, you are corrected. And you know, the Bible says that hidden love is, <laughs> open rebuke is better than hidden love. You are corrected. You moved from the ushering, you went to the Sunday school. You are corrected. You went to the worship team. You are corrected. In this church, you have served six departments simply because you cannot be corrected and you cannot forgive. My prayer is go back to the cross where you are forgiven. Number two, unforgiveness boasts of its good behavior. Unforgiveness, it boasts of its good behavior. Judgment always say you are bad and I am good. Matthew 7, 1 and 2. Matthew 7, 1 and 2. The Bible says, judge not that you will be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Jesus did not die for us so that we could have a religion. But in order that we might have an intimate relationship with God through him. He didn't come to establish, uh, to establish a religion. He came that we may have that intimate relationship with God, our creator. Real relationship with God softens our heart. If you have that real relationship with God, it's going to soften your heart. Because you cannot keep me in your heart and also keep Jesus. We cannot feed I believe there's only one seat in your, in your heart and my heart. It's you to determine who's going to take this seat. Is it me because of unforgiveness or is it God because of forgiveness? Number three. Unforgiveness complains. Unforgiveness complains. If you find yourself complaining frequently about specific individual, there's a good possibility that you have some unforgiveness toward that person. When that person speaks, everything, you're in the critical bench, and everything that concerns that person, to you, it is negative. Forgive people you are angry at. Find something positive to meditate and talk about. Pray and watch, and watch God work in you and in the people you love. Remember this, that person, before he became your enemy, he was your friend. And you know, in this life, I have my weakness and I have my strength. Focus on my, my strength. Leave alone my weakness because you cannot change me. Focus on my strength and let's walk this journey together. Because when you find somebody in this journey of faith, please don't look for the, for, for the weakness. Look for the positive because this is a journey. And I normally tell people, Binguni Nimbali Sana. Binguni, atujaifika. Heaven is very far. Number four. Unforgiveness divides and separates. Unforgiveness divides and separates. The enemies, the enemies thrive in isolation. Therefore, when you live in unforgiveness, you are offended. You are filled with bitterness. You live lonely and separated life in most cases. You become so sensitive and handle with the care someone. Have you seen a box written? Handle with the care this side up. What comes to your mind? These are glasses. You are a glass. That handle with the care, this side up. That is not our portion because of the blood of Jesus. Number five, unforgiveness continues to bring up that offenses. 
If you don't forgive and forget, every time you see me, you remember. It becomes so fresh. It's like yesterday. Because the enemy knows that is your weak point. The enemy knows he has a, a foothold in your life because you don't know how to forgive and forget. What is in the heart comes out of the mouth. What is in the heart comes out of the mouth. We can learn a lot about our true selves by listening to ourselves. Take time and listen to yourself. The world is full of so many voices. Just take time in solitude and listen to yourself. Have you ever thought you have forgiven someone for an offense, but discovered that the next time they did anything to irritate you, that you quickly brought up the old offense? Like us ladies. Oh, Ebusem archives. Archives. Yes, and Mekusame hair. But five years down the line, the same thing repeats. After 2020, in the month of August 15, you did the same thing. Let's learn to forgive. Let's learn to forgive. If Jesus comes today with those, all those archives, where will you go? Where will you go? We used to sing, Muzigo wa Thambi, Utakwama, Mulangoni. Thambi. Unforgiveness is part of the Thambi. Kwa vitakwama wapi? Can you imagine missing heaven because of carrying me? Uh, some of us here, you have, have unforgiveness for people that passed on. You know my father. He did this and your father passed on 30 years ago. And then you reach heaven. Your father is in heaven. Na una kwama kwa mulango because of unforgiveness. It means that we have not completely forgiven and we need God. To, we need to ask God to help us. Forgiveness is not easy. Remember, it took Jesus' life. At some point, there was darkness, total darkness for three years, for three hours at the cross because he was pleading for our forgiveness. It is not easy. But we have a helper to help us to forgive and forget. Finally, number six. Unforgiveness resents the blessings enjoyed by the offender. Unforgiveness resents the blessings enjoyed by the offender. Resentment over other people's blessings reveals a lot about our own character. Resentment over other people's and we said in the beginning, life is about people. Therefore, in life, there must be somebody above you and somebody below you. Therefore, my friends, have a big heart. Resentment. Over other people's blessings, it reveals a lot about our own character. God wants us to rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Take your part. You rejoice with those that are rejoicing. And weep with those that are weeping. Forgiving others their offenses is much easier when we are truly aware of our own sins and shortcomings. It is easy. Know that you are a sinner. You live by the grace of God. And there is no way God is going to send you that his grace cannot sustain you. In this salvation because of grace. Not because of our own doings, but because of the grace of God. God shows us forgiveness before beginning to teach us of our need to forgive others. God forgives you. And then takes you on a, a, a journey of how to learn to forgive others. No wonder, when you got born again, we didn't go to heaven straight the same day. He left us on this earth. He knew in this earth, people are going to offend us. In this house, we are going to rub shoulders with thieves. Imagine you enter into a matter two, and the person you're sitting next to has a gun. He's on a mission. He's going to, on a mission. He's going to do something I cannot say, or I can say it. He's going to kill. But the Lord delivers you because you are born again. Because of the mark of the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lord delivers you. And now you are here holding grudges. You and this thief, you are heading the same place. God wants to have relationship with us. He wants unity and harmony with us. And therefore, he must forgive us. And if all this, it required 
him to send his only begotten son. Even us, we need to forgive so that we can have a good relationship with one another, unity with one another, and harmony with one another. And life becomes so good when we live in harmony with one another. Forgiveness is preceded by God's great grace and mercy. Great, not small grace, but great grace and mercy. God knows forgiveness is difficult. He knows that it takes courage and strength to offer mercy where it is undeserved. It takes courage and strength to offer mercy where it does not deserve. And that's what happened to our lives. We did deserve it. But God said his only begotten son. He was left without a son. But today he has many sons because of the courage and the mercy Jesus took. God completely forgives and restores us to fellowship with himself, the most wretched sinners. He forgave us and restored us. That fellowship, it costed him, his son. It costed Jesus, his life. So that me and you, we can be forgiven. And we can be declared that now we are righteous because of the blood of Jesus Christ. We that were wretched of sinners. We were the chief sinners. It's only the blood of Jesus that had brought us back to the will of our father. And this morning, I don't know whom you are holding. But the Lord is saying, forgive the person. I don't know the person, but the Lord says, forgive the person, not their actions. But forgive the person. God forgives us because he loves us, not because our actions are ever worthy of forgiveness. But he just forgives us because he loves us. When Peter denied Jesus three times, Jesus offered him relationship and another opportunity to serve him. When Thomas was filled with doubt, Jesus offered him his nail-pierced hand to see the proof. And God gave him another chance. You can also forgive. Leave alone the actions. Forgive that person and let's move on. On. Maybe you are the only Bible that person can read. You are the only epistle that man knows. And yet you are holding on forgiveness. You and this person, you are all heading to hell. But this morning, we can take a turn around. This year, the theme of our this year is mounting up. And I want to submit to you this morning that we cannot mount up with the baggages. We must put on every weight and every sin that entangles us easily. Yes, Bishop says every time he preaches that not all of us are going to mount up. Why will you be left behind? Is it because of your sins? Is it because of the baggage? Is it because of the unforgiveness? This altar speaks an exchange and you can be free and ready to mount up. I want to bring to you the remedy of forgiveness. It's triple M. M, M, M. It is modern. Forgiveness is modern. Forgiveness is a miracle. And forgiveness is a medicine. It is upon you. It is modern. It is now. It is a miracle. It is now. And it is medicine. And it is available. And there is no pay. They are for everybody. Either you are working or not working. You can afford forgiveness. It is free. And you can afford it. We want to pray this morning. Shall we close our eyes? And when every eye is closed...